Welcome to Midaras Home School and welcome to another discussion about probability. In this video, we'll discuss some important definition of terms that we need to understand in dealing with probability problems, such as set, subset, random experiment, sample space, events, uh, simple events, compound events. Then we'll go to the basic properties of probability that includes the formula in computing the probability of an event. The last part will be problem solving that involves simple events. Let's go first to the definition of terms. What is a set? Set is a collection. It can be a collection of things or objects. These are things with common characteristics that are grouped together, like collection of books, clothes, toys, fruits. Consider this set of fruits. Apple, orange, grapes, strawberry, pineapple, banana, and watermelon. Let's say these are your favorite fruits. We usually use letter S to denote a set and enclose the elements of the set in curly braces as shown above. What is a subset? It is a set whose elements are all members of another set. Let's consider our previous example, your favorite fruits. Okay, These fruits can be categorized according to their colors. The red fruits are apple, strawberry, watermelon. The yellow fruits are banana and pineapple. The orange is orange and the purple fruit are grapes. These are all subset of S. What is random experiment? It is an experiment or a process for which the outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. What is sample space? Sample space S of a random experiment is the set of all possible outcomes or results of that experiment. In this slide, we have two examples of random experiments, tossing a coin and rolling a die together with their sample spaces. The sample space for tossing a coin is H and T, while the sample space for rolling a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What is an event? It is a possible outcome of an experiment. It is a subset of a sample space. Getting a tail in tossing a coin is an event, while getting a head is another event. This slide shows you the random experiment, sample space, and event. So in this table, you can recognize what is random experiment, what is sample space, and what is an event. Let's consider tossing a coin. In tossing a coin, we have a sample space H and T. And getting ahead is an event of that random experiment. Getting a tail is another event of that experiment. Number two is rolling a die. The sample space in rolling a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And an example of event for this random experiment is rolling an odd number. You can also have rolling an even number. Or you can also have rolling a number greater than 3. Or rolling a number less than 5. Those are different events of this experiment. Number 3 choosing a month in a year we have 12 months in a year so in our sample space we have 12 elements we have the january to december an example of event of this random experiment is choosing a month that has 31 days you can also have choosing a month that has 30 days or 28 days so now you have the idea, you can differentiate random experiment, sample space, and event. So what is simple event? It is an event with only one possible outcome. What is compound event? It is a combination of two or more simple events. It involves probability of more than one outcome. In this video, we'll solve some problems that involves probability of simple events, 
problems related to compound events will be discussed in another video. Okay, basic properties of probability. In computing the probability of an event, we use the formula theoretical probability equals number of favorable or desired outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, we use the theoretical probability here because there are three main types of probability. Theoretical probability, experimental probability, and axiomatic probability. So in this discussion, we use theoretical probability in computing the probability of an event. Probability is a value between 0 and 1 inclusive. The minimum value for probability is 0 and the maximum value for the probability is 1. Mathematically, we write it this way. A here is an event. If the probability of an event A is 0, it means that the event will not happen or the event is impossible to happen. If the probability of an event A is 1, it means that it is certain to happen or 100% that it will happen. Remember our previous discussion about a spinner? The question goes like this. What is the chance that the spinner will land on a red space? Now let's change the question. What is the probability that the spinner will land on a red space? The entire space is red, so it is certain that the spinner will land on a red space. So the probability is equal to 1. Now let's have another one with the same question. What is the probability that the spinner will land on a red space? In this case, there's no red space. It is impossible to happen. The probability of landing on a red space is zero. Another property is the sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes is one. Another property is the complement rule. P of A prime is equal to one minus P of A. P of A prime is the probability that an event A will not happen or the probability of event A is not occurring. Sometimes this is useful in solving probability problems. Before we go to problem solving of probability problems, you have to take note that you always have to list down all the possible outcomes or you must know the sample space of the specific random experiment that we are dealing with. Because if you know the sample space and you write all the elements in that sample space, you just count the number of elements. This will be the total number of possible outcomes, which is the denominator or the divisor of our probability formula. And then the number of favorable outcomes, you can also get it from that sample space. Okay, now let's go to uh, problem solving. Let's now solve some probability problems. Number one, in rolling a die, what is the probability of rolling an odd number? What is the probability of rolling a number less than three? And what is the probability of rolling a number greater than five? In dealing with probability problems, we must know the sample space of the specific experiment that we are dealing with. So in rolling a single die, the sample space is this. S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 possible outcomes in this experiment. The total number of possible outcomes is 6. Okay. Remember our uh, formula for computing the probability of an event, it is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. So we can get the number of possible outcomes from the number of elements of the sample space. And then we can get the favorable outcomes from this uh, sample space also. Okay, let's see. Rolling an odd number. And there are three possible outcomes for rolling an odd number okay so we have this this and this okay so we have one three and five the probability of rolling an odd number is equal to three over six three possible outcomes favorable outcomes and the total number of possible outcomes is six so we have three over six for letter b Rolling a number less than 3. We look for the numbers here 
which are less than 3. 1 and 2 are numbers less than 3. So we have two favorable outcomes. 2 over 6. Okay, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So let us see. Rolling a number greater than 5, and the number greater than 5 is 6. So we only have one number which is greater than 5. So we only have one favorable outcome. Probability of getting a number greater than 5 is equal to 1 divided by 6. That would be our solution for this problem. Let's have our second problem. In tossing a coin once, what is the probability of getting a head? And what is the probability of getting a tail? First, in our solution, we must know or we must list all the elements of our sample space. In this case, we have H and T, H for head and T for tail. So the total number of possible outcomes is 2. So our denominator for our probability is 2. 2, the number of possible outcomes. And then for getting ahead, we have 1 favorable outcome. So we have a numerator, 1. In getting a tail, Okay, we have the denominator 2, which is the total number of possible outcomes, 2. And then for getting a tail, we have one favorable outcome. One favorable outcome for getting a tail, so we have this one half. Uh, remember one of the properties of probability? The sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes is 1. Probability of getting ahead, this is one half. And the probability of getting a tail is also one half. One half plus one half equals one. P sum here is the sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes. Let's have tossing a coin twice. How will we get the sample space for tossing a coin twice? In tossing a coin twice, what is the probability of getting two heads, of getting at least one head, and getting one tail and one head. First step for our solution is getting the sample space of the experiment. Okay, in this case, we have two coin toss. The first toss will happen first before the second toss. So for the first toss, we have these possible outcomes. We have H and T. For example, we get a head for the first toss. On the second toss, we'll either get a head or tail also. For this case, we have HH or head head. Okay, the chance of getting two heads for the first and second toss. And then head and a tail is another possible outcome. And then for the first toss, if we get a tail, we can get either head or tail for the second toss. We have this combination TH. TH and TT, both tails. So we have these four possible outcomes head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. Our sample space would contain four possible outcomes. So this will be our sample space. So now let's compute for the probability of getting two heads. The probability of getting two heads is this. We have one favorable outcome in getting two heads. So our probability of getting two heads was one favorable outcome divided by four possible outcomes. We have one fourth is the probability of getting two heads. Let's have the probability of getting at least at least one head. Let's go to our sample space. This outcome contains two heads, this outcome contains one head, and this outcome contains one head. We have one, two, three favorable outcomes divided by four possible outcomes. So we have three-fourths. Okay, three-fourths is the probability of getting at least one head. Getting one tail and one head. Okay, what is the probability of getting one head and one tail. We have these favorable outcomes, HT and TH. One head, one tail, one tail, one head. We have two favorable outcomes divided by four. We have two fourths or one half. Okay. okay, let's solve another problem. 
in a deck of cards what is the probability of drawing a king what is the probability of drawing a red queen what is the probability of drawing a diamond and what is the probability of drawing an ace spade before we go to our solution, let's have this information about a deck of cards. One deck of cards is equal to 52 cards. We have four suits, heart, diamond, spade, and club. For each suit, we have 13 cards. And what are these 13 cards? For each suit, we have an ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, and king. This is 13. So 13 times 4 equals 52 cards. Diamond and heart are color red. Spades and clubs are color black. Our sample space contains these 52 cards with this information. We have four suits, we have two colors, and we have these numbers. These are the names of each card. Let's answer the following question. What is the probability of drawing a king? So from this information, we know that we have one king for each suit. We have four suit, so we have four kings. Our favorable outcomes would be four. Over total number of possible outcomes, 52. And the probability of drawing a king is four over 52. How about drawing a red queen? Okay, we know that we have four queen, but we only have two red and two black. The favorable outcomes for getting a queen is two. The probability of getting a red queen is two over 52. What is the probability of drawing a diamond? We have 13 cards for each suit, right? So we have 13 diamond, 13 hearts, 13 spade, and 13 clubs. The favorable outcomes would be 13, okay, 13 diamond. So the probability of drawing a diamond is 13 over 52. If we change this question, drawing a heart, it's also 13 over 52. Probability of drawing spade is also 13 divided by 52. The probability of drawing a club is also 13 divided by 52 because we have 13 diamonds, 13 hearts, 13 spades, and 13 clubs. And this would be one fourth. One fourth of our cards is 13. The probability of drawing an ace is spade. This is a specific card. We are talking about one specific card, okay? An ace is spade. So we know that a spade has 13 cards and we have one ace, okay? So the probability is one over 52. We only have one favorable outcome, one specific card. So the probability of getting an ace spade is one divided by 52. Same thing with different cards here. When we talk about a specific card here, the probability is one over 52, okay? One card, one favorable outcome, the probability is 1 divided by 52. If you can answer our problem regarding tossing a coin, rolling a die, probability problems in dealing with a deck of cards, then you can answer this kind of question easily. There are 28 students in a class, 11 are girls. If a student is selected at random for a recitation, what is the probability of selecting a boy? There are 28 students and there are 11 girls. So we must know the number of boys. 28 minus 11 equals 17. 17 are boys. The teacher will choose out of 28 students. Our sample space is 28. Our total number of possible outcomes is 28. The probability of choosing a boy 17 divided by 28 that is our answer easy easy right <clears throat> let's have another probability problem if you ask your friend to choose a month from a year what is the probability that he or she will choose a month that has 31 days a month that has 30 days a month that has 28 days and a month that starts with letter J First, let's have our sample space here. We know that 
we have 12 months in a year january february march april may june july august september october november and december so we have 12 possible outcomes our denominator will be 12. for letter a what would be our favorable outcomes which are the months that has 31 days we have january march may july august october and december so we have one two three four five six seven so our solution for letter a would be seven divided by 12. and for letter b a month that has 30 days april june september and november so we have one two three and four so we have four favorable outcomes divided by 12. month that has 28 days so we have february we have only one favorable outcome one divided by 12. and what is the probability that he or she will choose a month that starts with letter j january june and july so we have three months that starts with letter j the probability here would be three divided by 12. Okay, out of this 12 months, we have 3 months that starts with letter J. So this will be our solution. And we will discuss more problem solving in our next video. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video. Bye!